in this 2019 season. And they've also won seven straight road matches coming in. So looking for number eight, but it's in jeopardy a little bit right now with the Crusaders playing so well. Yeah, if they want to maintain that perfect record, they're going to have to find at least one goal here in the second half as we're underway. You mentioned about them only having four first-half shots. How much of that, I wonder, is due to the formation Mike Avery has deployed today, kind of putting an extra defender back there to deal with their attack up front? Well, there's been a number of plays where it's gotten down to that last defender as well back there, and it might have really made a big difference in the way that first half really played out. I mean, you take away... Forgetting the penalty kick for a moment, there were a couple other moments in that first half where this Missouri State team was able to put together what looked like a potentially uh, threatening look on offense, and it was thwarted, I think, a lot of it due to that formation. Tamar Rose gets it taken away in midfield here as Missouri State now going right to left across your screens, carrying it in Jack Denton, looking for some help, but gets it knocked away. You have to wonder if Missouri State maybe tries to commit another player forward and leave themselves a little thinner in the back, or if they just stay the course here. You know, they're 13-0-0 for a reason, but they haven't faced many deficits this year. We said only three times have they trailed all year, just twice for a total of 25 minutes in Valley play entering today's match. Yeah, and that's, uh, that time is ticking upward right now, too. I mean, they're not used to being in this kind of a position this season so like I said look for them to really try to push the ball more aggressively up the field and like you said as well it's a good point they may try to bring one more offensive player up or one more midfielder at least Missouri State obviously we mentioned among the top 10 in the nation both offensively and defensively but haven't been playing opponents off the park recently their last three wins have all come by just one goal we'll see here if they can turn this around, or if Valpo can hold on. Valpo hasn't had a clean sheet yet this year. Holt's still looking for his first collegiate shutout. Long way to go to get there, but early in the second half, Valpo leading the ninth-ranked team in the nation, one nothing. And again, uh, it all goes back to the defensive unit of Valparaiso this season, struggling a little bit uncharacteristically. Not today, necessarily. Dalling shot there just why and takes a deflection, actually, on the way in. So it goes left a goal. That was a nice inside touch that time by Dowling, and he got a pretty good look at this thing. It's just a little bit wide, but it, it definitely had the velocity and the leg to get there if it had just been a little bit more inside of target. Jack Denton will take the corner for Missouri State, Missouri State's fourth corner kick of the match. On the near side here. Gets the okay from referee and launches a high ball far into the box. Missouri State manages to keep it from going out over the end line, but nice job back there by Rose to clear it into the midfield. The Bears still pressing, however, but turned over and Rose there, and Wagman will just clear it downfield. Instead of going Missouri State, nice job by Wagman getting it to his one attacker downfield as Valpo attempts to counter here. This is Cushing on the right side. Cushing now with possession gives it to Marcy. Now in the middle, Garcia looks for the run of Marcy. Ball knocked down. And that's going to be a foul on Marcy. A little too aggressive trying to get to the ball. You like the combination play there, though. And the fact that Valpo is not just pounding the ball out and bunkering back for 45 minutes. They're pressing forward looking for a second goal. Well, they know that they can't take their foot off the proverbial gas pedal. I know it sounds cliche, but it's so true in this game, especially when you're dealing with a great team like this. One nothing lead can change on the blink of an eye, and especially if the Bears start pressing the ball up the field a little more aggressively on this defense and we'll start wearing them down. But um, otherwise, it was nice to see the Crusaders trying to get the ball to Mason Marcy. He's been kind of quiet so far in this one. He's their leading goal scorer, so you got to think they're going to try to get it his way. Nice midfield tackle from Dybala and breakout for Valpo. Madondo down the left. Madondo cutting it inside onto his right foot. He'll try the shot from 20. It's a goal! Ryan Madondo from 20 yards along the ground. Valpo leads Missouri State 2-0. And how many times have we said it in this game, Aaron? It's just a matter of time for Ryan Madondo. That last game at Bradley, he had so many chances. Three shots, they were all on frame. And in this game, they keep trying to get him the ball. And finally... He's able to get that proverbial goal that he's been looking for 
you know, to get the monkey off his back because he has been right there so many times and finally rewarded for his efforts right there. 49th minute tally for Ryan Madondo, his third of the year, his first goal since October 1st. Valpo 2, Missouri State nil, and now you have to look at what, what do the Bears do now. Obviously, they've got a great offense, but now facing a two-goal deficit for the first time this season. This is the first time they've allowed more than one goal in a match this year. It's just unbelievable. I mean, this Crusaders team came into this match with only 18 goals on the entire season, and today they've just looked like a totally different group. It's really kind of a bizarre day so far, but uh, in a good way if you're Valpo's side. But now what do you do if uh, you're John Leamy and you're looking to make some adjustments? We talked about what he might do out of the break, but he's never lost a game to the Crusaders before. Obviously a lot of time left. And a lot can happen in 40 minutes, but um, got to like, uh, if you're Coach Avery, where you're at right now on the Crusaders' side. And what's the saying? The 2 nothing lead is the most dangerous lead in soccer, and especially at attacking side among the top 10 in the nation. You want to keep the ball out of danger as much as possible. And right as we say that, Missouri State has to throw deep in their offensive end. You have to wonder, though, will this Bears team get a little – how will they deal with the two-goal definitely? We literally don't know. They haven't had to yet this year as they look to maintain their perfect season. That's a great point, too, because it really changes the mindset of a team when they haven't been used to playing from behind and they got to play from behind in the second half of this game, especially on the soggy, cold, wet field. Ryan Madondo taking his chance to double Valpo's lead here early in the second half and just... Nice takeaway there from DeMar Rose, and you know, like to see this. Missouri State just two back, and Valpo looking to take the opportunity to counter as Madondo again will attempt to work down the left. He crosses in the box looking for Cushing just out in front of him. He's shielded off from the ball. It'll be a goal kick for Missouri State. Yeah, that time the defensive look was a lot stronger for the Bears. You'll see this uh, little cross kick here trying to get the ball in there. And, you know, even if it had been on point, I'm not sure he gets that shot off. But you saw there in that last sequence just how much Missouri State's pushing forward as Valpo started that counter with a 2v2. Missouri State will earn a throw-in deep in their attacking third. Ball looked like it might go out for a corner, but crossed the touch line just before it reached the end line. This will be a throw for the Bears with 38 minutes to go here from Brownfield. Got to remember, too, I mentioned this early in the game, Aaron, that uh, the Bears were able to get those two goals early in that first meeting between these two teams as another one hits the goal post. Yeah. Um, not the right goal post, by the way. Um, but after that, for the last, what, eight, you know, almost 80-something minutes of that game, it was one-to-one. -one. I mean, it was an even game after that. It was just those first 10 minutes or so. That was uh, that were so difficult for the Crusaders in that one, but they made nice adjustments that got them back kind of where they were hanging in that game. And you wonder about Missouri State's mentality. This sub tells you a lot about it. Ian Jones coming in and playing the midfield, taking out a center back in Ben Stroud. They are really going to throw things forward here. They need to down 2-0 here with 37 minutes to play in their perfect season on the line. Ian Jones is a threat to score, too. He's had three goals and an assist on the year, so something to watch here as we go forward. Down the sideline, nice job there by Villalobos. Plays the ball off of Bruseth, giving Valpo a goal kick instead of potential throw-in or corner for Missouri State in the offensive end. Yeah, it's that dangerous part of the field there in the corner that you just never know. It's so close, it can go either way between being a corner kick and being the goal kick. And for the Crusaders, I mean, how happy can you be that you got a goal kick there and got it out? Surrey State wins the possession in midfield off the goal kick there. The long ball forward, Wagaman will head it. Bringing it down on the far side, Bruce Seth. And he'll change fields here and give it Greg Stratton, who knocks it ahead to... An Nicolo Molitero. Molitero with two on him. Mason Marcy will be content just to put the ball out of play for a throw. And the Bears, oh, we were going to take a sub. 
And we will. It looks like there was a little confusion whether the sub was going to be let in there or not. Keon Yari makes his first appearance of the match, coming off the bench, replacing Bruseth. And he's been a regular staple off the bench. He's appeared in all but two of their matches this season, coming from that spot. He's taken one shot, does not yet have an assist on the year, but looking to get him involved in this one here. The Bears attempt to set. they got ten guys pushed up over midfield. All ten field players are over the midway line, and in fact, ten yards over the midway line. They really are pushing here in center backs right now. Jack Denton kind of moved back into a center back position with Stroud being taken off the pitch. Back there with he Kyle Hebert. Hebert brings it up. Now a little flick on for Molotero. Attempting to cross the middle. Dalling. Ball knocked down for Bentley. Bentley claiming penalty. No. A lot of contact there. And now finally, let's see. It looks like a foul on Bentley. A little frustration there. His penalty shout got denied. And then Valpo eventually gained possession. Well, you know, that's a classic case of where Bentley really thought that he should have gotten the call. And perhaps he should have there. There was a lot of contact there that did not involve the ball. And then Bentley gets called. So the frustrations continue in what's been just a bizarre game for Bentley, really. I mean, he missed that penalty kick off the post, and then, you know, and that one was questionable in of itself. But uh, nonetheless, they got it, and they weren't able to capitalize on that opportunity. Long ball down the left. Nice job by Connor Langan getting back there from Missouri State to break up the possible attack and foul called on Valpo on the far side here. Yeah, getting tangled up that time uh, were those two guys and it just was really trying to position yourself for the ball I mean it wasn't really anything that blatant but sometimes you know it's just the way it happens you go for each other instead of the ball trying to make contact Valpo wins the ball on the far side wins a throw in off of that again 33 minutes to go here at Brownfield Valpo to Missouri State 0 the ninth ranked Bears on a school record winning streak, the only perfect team remaining in Division I men's soccer, looking to clinch the outright league title today. But all of that right now is on the line as goals lead in the first half and early in the second half for the Crusaders have them two goals to the good. I mean, you have to go all the way back just to put in perspective, Aaron. 2001 was the last time you had this impressive of a win streak in the conference in the Missouri Valley. That was SMU. And, I mean, that's 18 years, so it just puts it in perspective of how good they've really been. Cross attempt there from Molotero. Marcy gets in the way of it. Marcy being more defensive kind of shifted him here in the second half, was um, really playing up more in the midfield, up uh, on the attack in the first half, and went the two-goal lead. You obviously don't need as much in the attack. He's kind of playing in that right-back position. It's a corner kick here. Headed away momentarily. Missouri State trying to reset here. Jack Denton on the left wing. Low cross in. This is Wilkin with the ball. He gets taken down and wanted a foul call. Didn't get called. And now Valpo breaking out a three on two here developing. Tamar Rose plays it ahead. And, uh... Madondo couldn't handle it cleanly on the far side, but still retains possession for Valpo for about a second until he turns it over and the Bears look to push. And every time the Bears get the ball, they're going to be throwing everything forward here in the final 32 minutes. What other choice do they really have at this point? I don't think they really planned on being in a situation like this in this game. Molotero attempts to put it in the box. That's knocked down by Marcy. How many times have I said that already in the second half? You don't normally hear it. Marcy's been, you know, one of their better offensive players. He's a midfielder for the team, and he's their leading goal scorer. But that's now the second straight possession where Marcy has made just an incredible defensive play. Mason Marcy in on the first goal and, you know, was showing off his defensive chops at right back here in the second half as Valpo attempts to withstand the Bears' barrage of attacks. 2-0 to the good right now for Valpo with 31-20 to go in this game. And the Crusaders can afford to slow it down a little bit on their offensive end. They're trying to push the ball upfield very quickly, 
and it's something you don't really need to do right now. Dalling with it, gets it back to Stratton. Stratton in the center of the field, and his pass is off the mark. Will be booted out of play for a Missouri State throw at midfield. The Bears looking to take a quick throw, nothing doing, and now we'll get someone else taking the throw. <laughs> Here, you take it. <laughs> well, you know, they made up their minds on one of them, and now they just have to figure out a way to get some offense going here on the other end. It's just been a kind of a frustrating afternoon for the Bears, but Crusaders doing a great job on defense, and that's a lot of the reason why. Wilkin gets it to Dolling. Dolling in the middle of the field. Now it goes back to Wilkin. Nice slide from behind. Good job there by Dabala. Slide tackling from behind, keeping Wilkin from controlling into the box, and it results in a turnover. Valpo bringing it forward. DeMar Rose wins it, ships it down the left for Madondo. Can he keep it in play? He can. And Valpo will retain possession. There were like three really, really good touches that Valpo just took to get that ball back, too. Three different players were involved, too. You mentioned Dabala and then uh, DeMar Rose and a few in one other, too. It was just really great to try to see them set up something there, unfortunately for them. Now uh, the ball back to the Bears, but still can't take that away. Bears with it. Now Wilkin looking, and now we'll bring it back as they'll reset from the back. Basically playing three in the back now, Missouri State is, as they look to overturn a two-goal deficit, the first two-goal deficit they've faced all year long. A mistake there on the far sideline, just a simple mistouch of the ball goes out of play, and it'll be a... Valpo throw in following substitution. Number 19, Joe Quadio back into the match for Valpo. He'll replace Cushing. Out, or, nope, Cushing was just getting rid of a hand warmer of sorts. Looks like he'll replace Madondo over on the left. And wouldn't be surprised if this is about a you know 10-minute run or something for Quadio here. Give Madondo a few minutes off and get him back on uh, in the game's final minutes. Yeah, you definitely want him out there down the stretch run, so giving him a little bit of rest here, not a bad idea from Coach Mike Avery, especially with the game Madondo's had, really on both sides of the ball, very active. And of course, he had the goal here early on in this half, and can't say enough about what he's been able to do this past week alongside Adon Garcia with his three-assist game, which was the first in the conference this season, that one at Drake last week. Missouri State pushing forward, but Molotero unable to get on the end of that one from Dalling. Valpo another sub here. This will be Lucas Oliveira, sophomore from Rio de Janeiro, entering the match for the first time today. His 11th appearance of the season. He did not play in Valpo's last two matches. Getting a little run here with Valpo up 2-0. Try to, again, maybe just kill off some minutes for the, uh, for the regulars, and so they come back on later with fresher legs well and before his time here he had played for Fluminense FC in Brazil where he was a Brazilian national champion under 20 in 2015 regional champion U17 in 2013 and 14 following in his father's footsteps whom was a legend for that very same team in Brazil Guadio with it out left nice long ball gets it to Joe Guadio trying to outrace the right back in there. Gets it across into the box. No one on the other end for Valpo, though. It's a very nice run from Quadio and good ball, too, if there had just been someone running onto it on the other end. Unfortunately, it just goes down as a turnover as Missouri State now controls near midfield. Mason Marcy, a nice tackle there. And Adon Garcia maintains possession. Oliveira now with it. He'll give it back to Garcia, and Valpo will be content to just possess the ball, pass it around, try to find the find the right spots to put the passes, and that was not it as Adon Garcia was a step offside when the pass was released. Yeah, no chance on that one, but you liked what you saw up until then on that possession. They did everything they really needed to do, that being the Valpo side, and once again, Mason Marcy's name being called on the defensive end with another great play. And at this point, if you're Valpo, you can't, clock watch yet but it's you're looking at it you're like okay how can we run off 20 30 seconds at a time and that last possession was a good you know few pass sequence that did 
kill a little bit of the clock as we're nearing 26 minutes to play in regulation. Valpo leading the perfect number nine Missouri State Bears 2-0 here midway through the second half. Stratton goes right side with it. Langen now looking down that right flank. Header from Wagaman, but controlled by Missouri State, and Mason Marcy heads the cross away. The Bears retain possession, however, as Molotero's in there. Molotero, header from Dolling, well over the bar. Nice cross from Molotero. But Dolling unable to get his head underneath the ball and bring, bring it down. And That's really the first threat Missouri State's had in quite some time. We had, and Hulse hasn't had much to do here in the second half. Yeah, I mean, it's really been a surprise. It's been shocking, as a matter of fact, how quiet Holst has really been in this game or, or had the pleasure of being in this game. He's used to being pretty active this season throughout with uh, some of the struggles they've had on defense this year. But so far in this game, I mean, you can't say enough about what they've been able to do limiting the Missouri State offense in terms of shots, shots on goal, just about everything. Yeah, Missouri State's pushed forward here a lot in the second half, but really hasn't connected in the final third yet. That was about one of their best opportunities, and goes for nothing as Dalling couldn't keep the header down. But a Valpo sub at the last stoppage there. Cole Rainwater back onto the field at forward. Again, probably a few-minute rest um, as Dalling brings it forward. Dalling will attempt another shot. That took a deflection but Hulse manages to corral it. Nice job by the freshman there on a shot which took a little bit of a weird bounce with a Missouri State uh, attacker ready to pounce on the rebound. He was able to corral it. It looked like it might have gotten redirected just a hair on the way in there, and those are always a little bit harder than what they look to really make the save on. It took that weird bounce, as you mentioned, and Hulse doing a really nice job that time to make that save. That was not as easy as it looked. Could we get a replay of that last shot on the next ball out? Missouri State now possessing around midfield. Ball to Yari. Yari directing his teammates. Gives the pass off. Now Dolling with it. Dolling, as we mentioned earlier, hasn't scored for over a month after an incredible stretch to open the season. Scored the match winner in each of their first four wins, but has not scored since September 26th at Western Illinois. So Dolling eager to get off the schneid, but hasn't been able to yet today. Nice tackle there from Marcy putting the ball out. Be a Missouri State corner kick. Yeah, but now Valpo, because they've got Marcy on the defensive end, there's the replay of that. You see that redirection ever so slight there, causing the ball to take a weird bounce, and Hulse doing a nice job, but... Getting back to Marcy for a second, he's got the height and the athleticism in there to really disrupt this kind of a corner kick. So it's interesting what Valpo's doing right now defensively. Denton goes deep in the box, goes beyond everyone. Now volleyed back up in the center of the box. Holtz tries to punch it away and get some help there as that was Oliveira clearing it toward midfield. In that last stoppage, John Coca comes on for Missouri State. Coca in the box there trying to bring it down. Now a flick on, and it goes out for a goal kick. Coca getting involved immediately off the bench, but nothing on frame. Was Holst maybe a bit lucky there. His punch-out attempt off the corner didn't didn't go so well, but Oliveira there on the spot for Valpo to help erase the danger and keep the Bears off the board. Yeah, that was the big thing that you might have missed in that play was that Holst was caught out of position off of that deflection or save he made off the corner and then after that it was really all the Valpo defense there clearing that ball out of there that was uh, a really nice play by Oliveira Yari goes wide right looking for Langen Langen keeps it in play now plays it back to Yari in the middle so the Bears trying to find a way to puncture the Valpo defense Greg Stratton on the ball now he'll go wide left to Jones Jones one-on-one -on -one with Marcy out wide left. Jones trying to get to the end line. Low cross in the box. Cleared away by Valpo. Now Yari takes it. Yari will try a shot from about 25 yards. That's a high and over the bar for a goal kick. A little, a little speculative there from Yari, but on a day like today. Well, you'll see there that, uh, that cross on the ground there, that line drive, that set up a really good opportunity. There were a couple good looks there if uh, – 
Missouri State had some better positioning there on the offensive side, and then even when the ball went straight out on that, still on that second shot attempt, had a pretty good look at it right through the middle of the Valpo defense. That was probably the best look the Bears have had in the second half offensively. 50-50 ball at midfield goes out. It'll be a Valpo throw. Both teams with subs waiting to come on here. Dawson Lee, number 26, back into the match for Missouri State. We'll see Andy Lamelli, number 12, for Valpo back into the match, replacing Michael Cushing. Greg Stratton coming off for Missouri State. And again, is this another switch to try to get even more numbers forward for the Bears as you bring on a midfielder forward guy who plays up front for one of your backs? Well, it definitely is at this point. I mean, you're looking at 20 and a half or so left in this game. And really, I mean, time is not a huge factor yet, but when you're down two goals, you really got to get something going, and the time is now for Missouri State. And you got to figure you're only going to have probably a handful of good looks left or opportunities left in this game to try to really score. Bentley fouled from behind right there by Quadio. Be a free kick. Will it be a card to Quadio? No. Does not look like it. Just a free kick from 35 yards out. Yeah, got behind Quadio that time. And uh, I'm not sure that he really needed to commit that foul. I kind of felt like he was doing a good job forcing the runner towards the sideline there and forcing him towards that side, really taking him out of the middle. But nonetheless, um, he felt like he was beat a little bit and committed it. Holst punches away the long effort into the box. Nice job there by the freshman on that punch. As Missouri State took a quick free kick and then sent a ball, high arcing ball in, but... The freshman was able to deal with it easily, and so we got 19 minutes to play here. Valpo maintains the 2-0 lead on number nine, Missouri State. Attempted cross there from Coca. And went dead after it deflected off a of Crusader. Allows Valpo to maintain possession. Quadio on the run. And right, right there, I mean, just something where what could have easily been a corner kick for Missouri State turned into Valpo maintaining possession now at midfield. That yeah, was another nice defensive play. They've been, Crusaders have been in the right spots a lot of times in this game, especially in the second half defensively, to make those kinds of exceptional plays really frustrating this offense. And I mean, you don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but I mean, it's easy to look at this and say that Mike Avery, I mean, this is shades of what he's seen from this team years ago. I mean, defensively, what they're doing today. Dolling on the ball for Missouri State. Now we go left side, Dawson Lee with it. Lee looking for a crossing angle, doesn't have it, and he'll have to retreat to Yari. Yari now across into the box. A good cross, and that's a goal. And Matthew Bentley heads home the cross from Yari. And just like that, Missouri State has cut the deficit in half 2-1. Well, what better person to get the ball to than Bentley, and now... Not sure what exactly happened there after the goal was scored. There was a little bit of extracurricular activity. You'll see it here on the replay. Great ball there into Bentley. There's the goal, but then Bentley continues to run in there, kind of attacking Holston there inside of his goal, and I'm not exactly sure what that was about there. So looks like that he was booked after the goal Bentley was for the extracurriculars. Looks Giving like a he yellow might be card. Cramping up a little bit there. But that's that's the least of uh, Missouri State's concerns right now is with 18.09 to play. They're still down one, but they've cut the deficit in a half here. And of course, Matthew Bentley now with goal in his sixth consecutive match. Ten goals all in Missouri Valley Conference plays. He gets worked on down on the sidelines there. When that ball was in the air, I mean, you could see it ahead of when it happened, too, that that was probably going to be a goal. I mean, that was just a perfectly placed ball in there for the header. And once again, Bentley scores. He extends his scoring streak to six games now. You don't normally think of a, a goal-scoring streak for a player. You think of like a hit streak in baseball, but I mean, six games in a row, that's pretty impressive. Valpo with the restart, 18 minutes to play. Crusaders still leading, Valpo 2, number 9, Missouri State 1. We, Missouri State, though, still needs a second if they're going to get the to level this game. They, they possess in the back right now. Stratton gets it to Hebert. 
who goes around the horn now and ball up in the midfield, knocked away momentarily by Villalobos, pushing up forward. But, you know, you see the man marking there, Villalobos on Bentley. Bentley got away last time. I don't think Villalobos wants that to happen again. Definitely not. And something important to note, too, is that that was uh, Kian Yari's uh, first assist of his young career, freshman midfielder. Yari on the ball now for Missouri State. Looks for the runner down the right. Wagman, good job knocking it up in the air long enough for him to break up the attack, but Missouri State coming right back with it. Wilkin, now Bentley. The Bears goal scorer looking potentially for a second to even the match. Bentley into the middle, headed, dangerous position, and cleared away back there by Lomelli. Boy, Lomelli was right in the right place at the right time there. That was another dangerous-looking cross, high arcing in the air that was probably going to go if not for a goal, it was going to be mighty close, and sometimes these goals from an explosive offense come in pairs, not to spell doom for Valparaiso there saying that, but uh, that was a pretty good-looking offensive chance there once again for Missouri State, who are kind of trying to shift the, uh, the tide here a little bit in the last couple minutes, playing a lot of time on this Valparaiso end, upping the pressure here. Adon Garcia back in for Valpo. I'm not giggling. Bruce Seth back in for Missouri State as teams trying to set their lineups here for the closing stretch of the game. We've got a quick restart after a Valpo foul here. Missouri State gets it down the left. Stratton with it. Stratton was out of play. Stratton tried the run down the left, just one little mistouch, and it goes out over the near touch line for a Valpo throw. Don Garcia is just the guy that you want in the game right now, too, for Valparaiso. You mentioned he just checked back in. One of our uh, key players for the game today, and, you know, it, obviously he had the big game with the three assists last week, putting him in record-setting territory for uh, the Crusaders program in terms of assists in the game, but also just the intangibles that he brings we mentioned at the break as well. I mean, 2018, he was the all Missouri Valley Conference, honorable mention, Missouri Valley Conference preseason all-conference team. I mean, a number of accolades for a guy that's been a great all-around player throughout his Valpo career. He's done a little bit of everything from scoring to playing great defense and obviously the passing game as well. So, uh, in fact, he helped the Crusaders to one of their uh, three wins this season, scoring the game winner in a comeback victory against Evansville earlier this year. So you know what he can do in these kinds of situations. Nice job there by Oliveira to knock away and clear into the defensive half of Missouri State. Long boot forward from Michael Creek, and looks like the Bears possess in midfield. Kian Yari, good addition off the bench here, has been right in the middle of a lot of action for the Bears, playing right in the center of the park. Denton looks there for Ian Jones. Ball goes out wide. Greg Stratton, dangerous ball in the area. Dalling now comes down with it. He can't get a shot off, then does, and his shot is blocked. Gets it back to Wilkin. Yari with a shot attempt. That's blocked by a Valpo defender. And they clear out to the sideline. Dangerous sequence there from Missouri State, and it's not over yet. Another cross in, and that'll be headed out for a corner kick. Yeah, Chavez Brooks was the one that was in there to disrupt that initially and force the ball back outside. Sophomore defender out of Kingston, Jamaica. And that was what kind of started that whole thing. See, there you see the save on the part of Holst, but then they work the ball back in, and this is where it really gets dangerous. This look right here. And then Denton free kick, or corner kick here headed out, and it looks like they're going to say it was headed by a Valpo defender or at least deflected off a Valpo defender for another corner kick. So the danger is not over yet for Missouri State. As they look for the equalizer here, Valpo 2, number 9, Missouri State 1, as the clock ticks toward 13 minutes to play here in regulation. And the Crusaders just have to find a way to clear this ball beyond midfield for a little bit. They have really had a lot of pressure on them here. Denton, bodies down in the box, nothing doing, play goes on. Looks like Brooks with a header there trying to clear it. A little chip in from Stratton, gets headed away, and... At least for a couple seconds, the danger has been averted if you're a Valpo fan. But right back at it, and Stratton again brings it down. 
Denton will look for a cross in. Good job by Andy Lomelli getting in front of it, knocking the cross up in the air. Ian Jones brought down by Oliveira there. It'll be a free kick in a pretty dangerous spot, about 27 yards out, right in the center of the field. Yeah, and I'm not so sure about this one. If you watch this replay, it looked like it was more incidental than it was really any kind of shove there. Looks like he kind of lost his footing. Might have been a little bit of contact, but nonetheless, the officials thought it was enough to make the call, and now another advantageous spot for the Missouri State side here trying to come back into this game. Bruce F., the center man of three, around the ball here, Yari to the left. Stratton to the right, which of the three will take it? It'll be Bruce F., Bruce F., low along the ground, deflects off the Valpo wall out to the left-hand side. Wilkin loses possession. The Bears get it back. Yari right in the midst of things again. This time Marcy comes away with it. Marcy up the sideline, but Bruce F. cuts it off to retain possession for the Bears. They'll cycle back to the back where Langan attempts to start the move forward. I have Yari, a hunch. Yari gets it taken away as trying to push forward here is Quadio. But he, his move gets thwarted around the midfield line. And again, Missouri State pushing forward. Wilkins sliding it through ball. But there's no one for Missouri State to have run onto it. And Edwin Holst gobbles it up. And we have 11 minutes to go. Valpo 2, Missouri State 1. So I was just going to say that I have a hunch that Mason Marcy is probably going to be used a little bit more in this role if Valparaiso can find ways to get ahead early in games here down the stretch run of this season. I think Coach Avery has to like what he's been seeing from him on the defensive end. Obviously, the leading goal scorer on the team, but you know what? You can use him in a couple different roles and still be successful. Yari for Missouri State is they try to hold on to the perfect season to date, 13-0-0, the only team without a loss or a draw in Division One men's soccer, number nine in the nation, all on the line here with just over 10 minutes to go here at Brown Field. Yari delivers out wide right. Bruce F gets it taken away, cleared out. But Missouri State doing a good job not letting Valpo clear ultimately all the way out of the attacking zone, pushing the ball right back in quickly. Long ball over the top, a judge to be offside. And a, yep, probably a call. step or two early there on the run. Yeah, that one you could see pretty much the whole way. He was about, yeah, about a half step or a step out in front, and definitely the right call. And it was a good ball trying to get that thing in there, but the timing of it was just a little bit off, just enough so where they got the offside call. We have an injured Valpo player in the middle of the field. Not sure who that is. Try to get some eyes on it down. Not sure if it's a cramp. It looks like it's a cramping issue going on. I'm trying to deduce who it is by who else is out there. It might be a Don Garcia. I believe it is a Don Garcia. And it yep, is. Down in the in the center of the field dealing with what looks to be potentially cramping issues with 9.53 to go. Let's reset. Dylan Wagaman goal for Valpo in the 44th minute. Gave Valpo the one nothing lead in the match. Then Ryan Madondo, a nice individual effort just a few minutes after the intermission. Put Valpo 2-0 up, and then it was Matthew Bentley for Missouri State in the 72nd minute who cut the deficit in half, made it a 2-1 game with 9.53 to go. That's where we stand right now as the Bears try to stay perfect. Valpo tries to get one of their biggest wins in program history in terms of uh, the rank of their opponent coming in. Yeah, as you see there, Adon Garcia, good news for the Crusaders, walking off under his own power. So as you said, it might be a cramping issue or something of that nature. You really don't want to see him go down at this point in the season or any time, really. He has been such an important piece of this Crusader team all the way around. Ball out of play to Missouri State on the far side. And yeah, he's, you know, Adon Garcia, kind of the talisman out there for Valpo. You'd like to have him here to kill the last nine and a half minutes if you're Mike Avery, but stuff happens and someone else has to step up and fill that role. Next man up, they call it. Long ball over the top, but a little ambitious, too far in front of Dahling. Holst comes out off his line easily to pick it up. 
So I mentioned when we were talking about the three-assist game last week from Adon Garcia, he was the first one to accomplish that feat in the program since Thomas Froats back in September of 1985 in a Crusader uniform. you got to go back a long way to find another player who accomplished what Garcia accomplished last week. Missouri stayed over the halfway line, Stratton here on the near side. Now Yari with it. Yari turns back as they switch fields here. Yari kind of anchoring that midfield as Missouri State tries to erase the deficit. Nice job by Chavez Brooks stepping up. Great ball through to Ryan Madondo. Madondo heading down the right side, gets it taken away. Nice job winning it back by Jack Oof. Denton. And the Bears moving forward as they've regained possession. Yeah, Madondo got out there in front and just a really great job by the Missouri State defense doing what they've done best all season, closing the gap there on him. Even though Madondo took a nice touch to try to get around, it just wasn't enough. Long ball for Dalling brings it off his chest. And now Molotero with it, gets it out to Ian Jones on the left. Looking for the run of Dalling, nice job by Chavez Brooks. But he can't keep it from going over the end line. It's going to be a corner kick to Missouri State. With. And that's a classic case of where the field's playing a role. He slipped on that one as he was trying to get that kick out of there, got no leverage on it, and that ball trickled just far enough to get the corner in a pivotal spot in this game, too. Denton, as he has all game, will be the one to take the corner for Missouri State with seven and a half minutes to go. Bears down 2-1 to one to the Crusaders. Right-footed ball, Chavez Brooks there, heads it pretty much straight up in the air. Not out of the danger area yet. A cross back in from the left. Lamelli brings it down. Now a shot attempt. Deflects off a Crusader defender and goes wide. And again, Missouri State keeping the pressure on in the uh, final minutes. That might have been Marcy again in there making a play. Let's see this. As that ball goes in there, it goes off a holse. And then it gets deflected to Marcy. And Marcy's actually the one who really makes that save. He hits it out of bounds. And, I mean, just can't say enough about the job he's doing. Denton takes the corner. Dalling heads it straight up in the air and out over the end line. Not a good effort there. So it'll be a goal kick to Valpo, who will make a pair of subs here with 6.40 to go as DeMar Rose, Michael Cushing back on, trying to see out the victory, get Valpo three points in Valley play, and break up the Missouri State perfect season. You know, going back to Dowling, it's been kind of a strange season for him. We mentioned how he was so hot at the beginning of the season with that stretch of goals, game-winning goals, as a matter of fact. Because yeah, now we have an injured player, it looks like, for Valpo again. Is that Villalobos, maybe, who's down? Let's take a look there. It looks like it is. If it's number eight, it is Villalobos. Yeah. Not sure what's... Yeah, he just kind of went to the ground there all of a sudden. and Looks like maybe an ankle, something leg-related for him as he kind of hops off. Yeah, just a little bit gimpy. but. So now you've had Adon Garcia go off with what looked to be cramps. Now you, ha you know, he's the linchpin of the midfield. And now you've got uh, you know, Chris Villalobos, who's kind of been anchoring the back line today, being forced off. Matia Dybala will come back on with 6.27 to play for Valpo. Yeah, not a scenario you want to see right now if you're a Valparaiso fan with those two off the field and out of the game here with potential injuries in the last seven or so minutes. I mean, those both of those injuries just happened in the last couple minutes. Don't know the severity or extent of them. Might be something minor, hopefully, for their sake. But nonetheless, you want those two emotional leaders in this game at this point. But Getting back to Dowling, though, for a second, really kind of mysterious. He led this team with 10 goals, double-digit goals a year ago, and just kind of has gone silent here since the end of September. And in terms of that, you just feel like eventually he's going to get back onto his goal-scoring ways, you would think. Dylan Wagaman into the center of the field, but unable to control there is Valpo. Missouri State brings it back across the midfield. Stratton. Running down the left, Stratton outpaces Cushing. But right there, Mason Marcy right back. Been solid there in the second half and stops a run forward there again. He, he's been the player of this, of this game so far on defense. I mean, he really has. He's made such a difference since they made that adjustment at the half. And I guarantee if he wasn't back there, 
This might be a slightly different half right now. Rose called for the foul right near the near side. Quick restart from the Bears with 5.35 to go. So they go out right, dolling. Long ball through, but that'll go over the goal line. Goal kick for Valpo. And the goal kicks, well, Valpo gets a sub in right before the five-minute mark, which is key when you're winning. If you sub after the five-minute mark and you're ahead, the clock stops. Well, this sub happened with about 5.20 on the clock, so the clock continues to run. And it's Vukashin Bolotovic coming in for Valpo to try to see out the final five minutes of the match. As they look to hold this lead, now you're looking at the clock becoming a major factor. If the Crusaders can somehow put together a good possession, which it looks like they're going to turn it over here, they could somehow hold possession for a couple minutes. It really becomes a factor then. And it all goes back to our one of our keys to the win for Valparaiso in this one of winning that battle. Missouri State with it in the offensive half. Now a retreat to midfield as they try to get set. Valpo with everyone behind the ball, obviously, trying to close out the 2-1 win. A header right into the path of Wilkin. Wilkin shot. That's a goal. Stuart Wilkin takes advantage of the Valpo miscue, and with 4.24 to play, the senior levels the match at 2-2. Yeah, that was just a miscue there. That ball hit right off of Valparaiso player, and I think it might have been, uh, if I'm looking at this right, it might have been Marcy, who we've been praising all half for his defense, finally makes a little bit of a mistake there, and Valparaiso pays the ultimate price giving up the tying goal here with four minutes plus left. Stuart Wilkin, his fifth goal of the year, all five of which have come in Missouri Valley Conference play. He scored against Valpo in the first match of the year and now has leveled this match just outside of four minutes to go. It's now Valpo to number nine, Missouri State two. Yeah, Wilkin, the Missouri Valley Conference offensive player of the week back in week four, and that was actually the week that he did score the goal against the Crusaders, as well as having a big game against Loyola. Missouri State offside here as they look to push forward, maybe seeing if they can get the third one in. They had not faced a two-goal deficit all year. And push forward here in the second half and have scored two to erase Valpo's 2 nothing lead. Now how does Valpo bounce back from that? Long ball forward, Missouri State heads it out. And a foul called against Valpo on the 50-50 ball. Yeah, it's the right call that time, trying to get the ball in there to Bentley, and there was a lot of contact there and none towards the ball. Missouri State pushing forward. Ian Jones and just a little too far out in front of him. That'll be a goal kick for Valpo. Missouri State subbing Connor Langan back into the match here. Now that they've evened up the match, maybe trade it and put the back line back in a uh, – normal formation and make sure you stay strong back there. Yeah, and after that 2-0 lead for Valparaiso, such a dangerous spot to be in. Losing the momentum here late in the second half and now totally different spot against this top-ranked defense of Missouri State when you've got to try to score a goal down the stretch now to try to still be victorious. Mentally, very tough spot to be in. Missouri State controlling in the back line. Stratton in the, on the near side here. Stratton gives it off to Denton. Denton will play it back, and you have to wonder, like, Missouri State's probably going to keep pressing forward here in the last two and a half minutes, but they're probably also not afraid to just see the match go to extra time. They have had three overtime wins this season, all obviously being perfect on the year. All three times they've gone to extra time, they've come away with the win. Yeah, and seeing some of the stats there, you see the changes that have really occurred in this shift in momentum. Valparaiso starting to finally give up and break down a little bit on defense, some more opportunities to this Missouri State side, now outgaining Valparaiso 7-4 to four in the shots on goal department, as well as that corner kicks 10-2 right now in favor of the Bears. So that's huge. Dolling turns with it for Missouri State. Now forward on the left side, Stratton. That goes out, or it looks like we have offside call here on Missouri State. Okay, and there is a Valpo player down. He was outside the sideline here on the near side on the left, just left of the Valpo bench. Wasn't sure if the officials were going to see it because he's so out of play off. down there. Yeah, so far off the field to play, yeah. 
That was a really nice play going back to that first second by Mason Marcy there. He didn't know that it was going to be offsides, and he slid in there and kicked that ball out of bounds. You'll see what happened here. Um, once again, I mean, this was a really heads-up play, but now going back to the injury, it looks yeah. like Chavez Brooks maybe? Yeah, Chavez Brooks just kind of clipped heels, it looked like, with uh, with Dalling and came up a little lame, got subbed out there. Minute 26 to go in this in regulation time at this point. Valpo 2, number 9, Missouri State 2. Bears run it down in midfield and look to press forward here as we near the 60-second mark of the second half. Jones cuts inside. Jones crossing, dealt with nicely over there by Eaton. And Missouri State retains the possession. Missouri State now, Jones on the left. Dolling to Denton, now back to Stratton, back to Denton. Nice passing game here. Denton gets it taken away, and that'll be Bolotovic coming out with it for Valpo with 40 seconds to go. And it looked like Villalobos might be back in the game. It looked like he was the one who broke that up on the other end. Nice play. With 30 seconds to go, Missouri State pushing forward. 30 seconds from extra time here. Nice slide tackle there. Valpo takes away possession. They got to clear it, and then they finally do there. Clear it with 15 to play here in regular time. As it looks like for all, we're getting ready for some extra time here at Brownfield on a.